In this video, I'm going to answer your question, which is better, selling a put option or buying a stock outright? You asked for it, so here it is. Hello everyone, welcome back to Life of Learning. My name is Randy Perez. Please know that I am not a financial advisor. This video is for educational purposes only. It's not meant to be investment advice of any kind. I am, however, a 22 plus year stock and option trader, as well as real estate investor. Before we get started, I just ask one thing of you. Please hit the like button to support this channel. It takes a tremendous amount of time and effort to create these videos for you. So if you appreciate the kind of material I provide for you on this channel, please support it by hitting the thumbs up like button. Thank you for that. Let's get started. First, let's talk to the advantages and disadvantages of outright stock ownership. Briefly, the first advantage of buying a stock outright instead of selling a put option in it is that if you're correct in your price expectation and a stock goes up in value, by owning the stock outright, you get to reap the benefit of that stock appreciation penny for penny. The downside of that though is that if you're wrong and the stock goes down in value, then you're also penalized penny for penny when that stock goes down. Some stocks pay dividends. If you're bullish on a dividend paying stock and you choose to buy it outright, then not only do you get the benefit of stock appreciation, but you also get the benefit of receiving that dividend. You get paid while you wait for the stock to go up in value. The challenge of this scenario is that you need to get the direction right in order to see any real financial benefit. If, for example, a stock that you're bullish on just traded sideways, then you're at best parking your money somewhere and receiving nothing for it unless it's a dividend paying stock. In that case, you'd only be receiving the dividend. And dividends usually don't amount to very much unless it's a very risky stock that pays a high dividend. If it's a safe or more stable dividend paying company, those dividends generally tend to be under 5%. I mean, it's better than not getting anything at all, but it's not like that's the sole reason to invest in a stock outright. Yes, there is a whole investing strategy driven towards dividend growth, and that is a real and powerful strategy, especially as a company increases its dividends over the years. For example, it's been estimated that in January of 1988, Warren Buffett paid around $2.45 per share for Coca-Cola stock. At that point, as you can see here, Coca-Cola was paying just under two cents per share per quarter, or eight cents a year for their dividend. Now fast forward to today, as you can see here in the blue rectangle, it's paying 42 cents per quarter, which equates to $1.68 per year. If you calculate that dividend's annualized return based on how much those shares cost Warren Buffett, he's getting a 69% annualized cash on cash return. Dividend growth investing is real and it can be very profitable, but it is a long-term game. However, if you're looking for a shorter term play, you really need to make sure that you get the direction right in order to benefit by investing in a stock and owning it outright. In my opinion, if a company is a non-dividend paying stock, there are better ways to take a bullish position, especially for the long term, than buying the stock outright. One of those ways is by buying a leap call option. You can do this instead of buying the stock outright. Let me show you an example of this. This is one of the leap call options that I own right now in Disney. Notice in the orange box that I bought the January 20th of 2023 110 leaps call option. If you follow the red arrow down, notice what the delta is on this leap option. Option. Remember that Delta tells you how much this option will go up or down in value based on the underlying stock going up or down in value per dollar. Notice that the delta on this leap call option I own is 0.937. That means that it will go up by 93.7 cents for every dollar that Disney goes up. It will also go down by 93.7 cents for every dollar that Disney goes down. By owning a call option, as Disney continues to go up, the delta will also go up. Notice how much this option will cost us to buy at the far left under bid and ask. Right now, the bid is at $69.70 and the ask is at $73.10. So if we went in the middle of that, we'd expect that this option will cost us about $71.40 per share to buy. That's compared to what Disney is currently trading at, as you can see in the red box, at $178.74. So we'd be able to make a very bullish trade in Disney, receive almost 94% of the upside move, but only risk 40% of what it would cost us if we bought the stock outright. Do you see why using an option in this position seems like a better move? The only real disadvantage that I see is the spread between the bid and the ask on the option is quite a bit larger than the spread between the bid and the ask if you were buying the stock outright. So you need to be patient in getting this leaped call option order filled if you decide to go that route instead of buying the stock outright. But you're risking a lot less by using the leap option and you get pretty much all the upside benefit. That's why if I'm trading in a non-dividend paying stock, and I'm looking to take a bullish position such as buying a stock outright, almost every time I will buy a leaped call option instead of buying the stock outright. If you went this route and bought a leap call option, but you want to generate income similar Similar to the covered call option strategy, you can always turn this into a poor man's covered call by selling a call option against the leap call option that you own. 
Another nice aspect of owning a LEAP call option instead of stock outright is that if you're wrong, the amount that the LEAP option will go down in value will diminish as the underlying stock goes down in value. If you own the stock outright, you're taking a penny for penny loss. However, as you can see here, as the stock's price declines, the delta or how much your call option will go down in value per dollar decline in the underlying stock will diminish. So you won't experience a penny for penny loss like you would if the stock had moved down in value and you own the stock outright. Let me show you what I mean. Here you see multiple strike prices of that same expiration day, January of 23 leap call options. Notice that as the strike price gets closer and closer to Disney's current price, 178, the delta declines. For example, notice that the 110 call option that we own, is delta is 0.937, whereas the $175 call option with the same expiration date, its delta is 0.583. So if Disney declines today, the $175 strike leap call option will lose 58.3 cents per dollar decline, whereas the one that we own, the 110, will lose almost 94 cents per dollar. This characteristic gives you some protection if a stock that you felt bullish on heads south and declines in value. You see, you won't lose as much per dollar move by owning a leap call option as you would if you own the stock outright. Buying a leap call option is a good way to have a bullish position on in a stock if you believe that over the long term, it will increase in value. If that's your long term belief, then in my opinion, you're generally better off buying a leap call option than selling a put option. If you like more information on how to use leap options instead of buying stock outright, when this video is finished, check out the playlist that I'll leave at the link in the description below entitled Leap Options. By the way, if that was really useful what I just shared with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. Now let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of selling put options as compared to owning stock outright. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I love to sell options. Selling put options is my number one favorite strategy, followed closely by doing covered calls and dividend paying stocks or poor man covered calls and non-dividend paying stocks. In this video though, we're comparing the advantages and disadvantages of selling a put option versus owning stock outright. So let me talk with you what the downside is of selling a put option as compared to outright stock ownership. And then I'll talk you through the advantages of selling put options. One of the big disadvantages of selling a put option as compared to outright stock ownership is that if you're bullish on a stock and you're right in the move and the stock goes up in value, the only financial gain you'll get is exactly how much you were paid for selling that put option. For example, here's a trade we did today in Kraft Heinz, ticker symbol KHC. As you can see here in the blue rectangle, starting at the left side of it, we sold four contracts or 400 shares worth of Kraft Heinz August 20th, 30 and a half dollar put options. For that, as you can see on the far right in the blue rectangle, we were paid 77 cents per share. So let's just say that Kraft Heinz decides to take off and go to $100 per share. The only thing we would make is 77 cents per share. We got the direction right, but we sure did miss out on a ton of potential profit. So if you're very bullish on a stock, this could potentially be a huge disadvantage for you. But that's not the whole story when it comes to selling a put option craft times. What I mean by that is that there's something that may not be obvious to those of you who are not ops traders that you should consider. Today, craft times closed at 39.52. Remember that we sold the 38 and a half option. So craft times could actually go down by two and a half percent and we would still have a hundred percent win. We only begin to lose once craft times is below that 38 and a half dollars on top of the 77 cents that we receive per share. So we truly don't start losing until Kraft Heinz is under 37.73. That's one of the huge advantages of selling put options versus outright stock ownership. You can be wrong in direction and still get a 100% win. But let's say that you're really bullish on Kraft Heinz. Let's say that you really felt that Kraft Heinz was about to take off and just skyrocket in price. Could you sell a put option and benefit from that big move? The answer is absolutely yes. Let me show you how. Let's now look at another put option we could have sold today if we were really bullish on Kraft Heinz. Here you see the exact same expiration day, August 20th, and I've circled in blue the $42.5 put option. Notice that this put option is selling for between $3 and $3.40 per share. So let's just go in the middle and see that we could sell it for $3.20 per share. This option is what's called in the money. Kraft Heinz is currently trading at $39.52. We're looking to sell the $42.5 put option. So it's $2.98 per share in the money. As such, $2.98 of the $3.20 premium is called intrinsic value, and it's how much the stock is in the money on this option. The rest of the $3.20 is called extrinsic value or time value. If you want to do a quick check to see approximately how much time value is left in a put option that's in the money, just take a look at the corresponding call option. Just to left that 42 and a half strike price, notice that the call option on the left of the chart is trading for between 21 cents and 24 cents per share. That's approximately how much time value is left in the put option. So if you sold this option, you'd pocket $3.20 
per share. If Kraft Heinz is at or above 42 and a half by August 20th, and the stock is not put or assigned into your account before expiration day, then you get to keep that entire premium. Personally, I wouldn't suggest this. This is one way that you can take a bullish position in Kraft Heinz, pocket more than just 77 cents per share like we did, and still not have to buy the stock outright. Remember that depending on what type of margin you have, your broker will require you to set aside some money just in case the stock were put into your account. Speaking of margin, that's one of the other potential advantages of trading in options versus outright stock ownership. For example, when we placed that Kraft Heinz trade today, notice how much interactive brokers required us to set aside for this trade in margin. In the blue box, notice that under the row labeled initial margin, they require us to set aside $2,089. Then they require us to have available if Kraft Heinz stays where it's at or goes up in price, only $1,899. That's compared to the $15,808 we must have available if we had bought the same 400 shares outright. So one of the advantages that option shares have if they choose to use it is the ability to use more leverage or margin. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I do not promote using much or any margin at all because it can be a double-edged sword. It can be great when things are going good for you, but when the tide turns and things goes against you, it can have the same effect as setting off a bomb in your trading account. It can blow your account up and put you out of business. So if you decide to use this aspect of ops trading, you want to thoroughly understand how margin works, especially what can potentially happen in the next market crash. That way you can plan and trade accordingly and set your account up so it wouldn't get destroyed when that happens. Another huge advantage of selling a put option instead of buying the stock outright is that when you sell a put option, you get paid immediately. In reality, if you are bullish on a stock, you can sell a put option, pocket your cash, and use some of that cash to buy some of the stock outright. Consistently generating cash flow is one of the main reasons why I love trading in options so much. If you'd like to receive alerts as soon as we make trades similar to the trades I've mentioned in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron at the link down in the description below. If you're curious about how much cash flow you could potentially make on a monthly basis by selling put and covered call options, check out the video series in the link above in the description below entitled Option Trading Monthly Cash Flows. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.